Mind-Blowing Projects in the Philippines Let's talk about the most important projects in the Philippines, which are either being paid for by the government or by private companies, aren't finished yet or have been given permission to start building, and will be done by 2025 or later. Perspective Manila PNR Bicol or the South Long Haul Task The Bataan to Cavite Interlink Bridge Laguna Lakeshore Roadway Network Task The Panay Guimaros to Negros Bridge the Makatai Intracity Train, the Manila Train Task, Sangli Factor International Flight Terminal, New Manila International Flight Terminal, PNR North-South Traveler Train. The largest and most exciting urban development project in the Philippines is the transformation of 9,450 hectares of land in Clark into the new city of Clark. Imagine that you are Asia's newest and most important financial center. The proposed metropolitan area would be 100 kilometers north of Manila and cover 9,450 hectares in total. It would be able to house as many as 1.2 million people. The first part of the project, which cost a total of $14 billion and included both satellite government offices and a world-class sports town, was finished in 2014. The first part of the project was finished. The project is expected to cost a total of $60 billion, which will be paid for by both the federal government and private companies over time as the economy grows. The program that had been in place under the previous administration and was called Build, Build, Build was changed. This change was made by the leader of the country right now, Ferdinand Marcos Jr. The Philippines government's main focus was on these framework campaigns which were meant to bring the country into its golden era of facilities. This is a way to connect the country's years of infrastructure gaps, which have been known for a long time to be a major cause of the high cost of doing business in the country. The high cost of doing business in the country makes it harder for the country to grow. The program also wants to encourage financial investments, help create new jobs, improve the country's standard of living, and help the economy grow. It is expected that when these projects are done, they will make a big difference not only in the Philippines' economy, but also in the lives of people who live on the streets. In a broader sense, improvements in the quality of building services will help bring down the cost of doing business, bring in more investment, and boost performance all over the country. Talking about 2022, let's talk about the five projects that were initiated in 2022. Number 1. San Fernando Cement Plant Expansion – $310 million As part of this project, a new cement production line will be built that can make 3 metric tons per hour. It will be built in South Poblacion, San Fernando, Cebu, in the Philippine Central Visayas region. Work on the building started in the first quarter of 2022, and it is expected to be done in the second quarter of 2024. The idea for this project came from the fact that there is a growing need for cement in the area. Number 2. Pangasinan Bulk Water Supply – $155 million The project involves building infrastructure in Locos that will allow 200 MLD of water to flow into the province. The building work started in the first quarter of 2022, and it should be done in the first quarter of 2047. The project's goal is to get treated water to the 16 towns and cities that make up the province through the province's water districts. It is the first project of its kind to bring a lot of water to the province and the area around it. Number 3. The Penaranda Solar Power Facility cost $150 million and has a capacity of 500 megawatts. As part of this project, a 500 megawatt solar farm will be built in the Penaranda which is in the central part of the Philippine island of Luzon. The building work started in the first quarter of 2022, and it should be done in the fourth quarter of 2023. The goal of the project is to increase the region's ability to make electricity by using renewable energy sources to meet the region's growing energy needs. Number 4. The Metro Town Residential Complex cost $150 million to build. On 2.1 hectares of land in Metro Manila, Philippines, five residential towers with 1,650 apartments each will be built as part of the project. The building work started in the first quarter of 2022, and it is expected to be done in the fourth quarter of 2026. 
The main goal of the project is to increase the number of places to live in the area. Number 5. Kayanga Bagayan Solar Power Plant, 94 megawatts, $95 million. In the Philippines, the project is to build a power plant with a capacity of 94 megawatts on a 196 hectare plot of land about 13 kilometers southwest of the capital of the province, Pagasinan. The building work started in the first quarter of 2022, and it is expected to be done by the end of the year. The goal of the project is to increase the amount of power that can be made so that the growing need for electricity in the area can be met. With this project, the company will start building its second solar plant. Once its 59-megawatt peak solar plant in San Carlos City, Negros Occidental, is finished, it will move on to the next project. Not even this, after being named High Potential Areas for Becoming Digital Cities by the year 2025, about 25 cities across the country will soon have more IT BPM jobs available right away. Emmanuel Manny Chaintik, the Assistant Secretary of the Department of Information and Communications Technology, held an online press conference on Tuesday to announce the start of a program that will create more jobs in the IT business process management sector over the next five years. This will help the rural areas grow and develop. The Department of Information and Communication Technology, or DICT, the Information Technology and Business Process Association of the Philippines, or IBPAP, and Lichiu Property Consultants work together to make a program called Digital Cities 2025. A brighter future awaits in the countryside. IBPAP President and CEO Ray Untal has named the 25 cities as follows. Balanga City, Batanga City, Cabanatuan City, Dagupan City, General Santo City, Iligan City, Iriga City, Laguna Cluster, San Pablo, Calamba, and Las Baos, Laog City, Lagazpi City, Malalo City, Metro Cavite, Bacor City, Imus, and General Trias, Metro Rizal. Untal says that they will get help from the Department of Information and Communications Technology as well as from other government agencies, local governments, industry leaders, and academic institutions. In addition to institutional development and infrastructure improvements, as well as marketing and promotion, he said that these cities will get individualized interventions with the help of the government, the business sector, and the education sector. He said that the program is backed by the Duterte Administration's Administrative Order No. 18, Series of 2019, AO18, which is called Accelerating Rural Programs Through Robust Development of Special Economic Zones in the Countryside and Executive Order No. 114, EO 114, which created the Balig Provincia, Bagag Pag Asa program. Both of these orders aim to create jobs in the country's rural areas. In January 2019, both of these orders were made. He said that the main reason the government is working to improve the IT BPM industry in these areas is because of its resilience and lasting role as a major growth driver of the Philippine economy. David Lichiu, the CEO of LPC, said that even though the 2019 coronavirus disease pandemic and the subsequent quarantine restrictions will affect business operations in many industries, he expects a rise in demand for IT BPM services in the country. Because Philippine IT BPM will be important to the country's recovery from this health crisis, we must be ready for demand to start picking up. This will be a big factor in how the rest of the world sees us as a long-term investment compared to our Southeast Asian neighbors," said Lichiu. Kaintuk said that the DICT will be worked on in each of the 25 cities with targeted efforts. As part of these targeted efforts, connectivity will be improved, which will help businesses in the IT BPM sector grow. We wanted to zero in on places where we might be able to create more jobs. We'll go to these places to see how the internet and cell phones work there," Kaintik told us. We'll check out those cities. We went to those cities to see if broadband and mobile connectivity were still good there. He said that the Department of Information and Communications Technology, or DICT, could make the connectivity improvements by working with telecommunications companies to speed up their expansion into the right areas. He said that the other things that the DICT would help to do include promoting a digital government by helping national and local government agencies go digital in many different ways. 
Thanks for watching this video. Stay tuned for more.